just wondering what you're doing here. The question of your resignation. We want information. 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 Sure. Oh, my goodness. We will. You are number six. Okay, so it's uh, late in the evening. Um, I'm only going to do one take of this. I'm just going to go straight through things which I've just been observing uh, and absorbing in my mind, uh, my consciousness and subconsciousness. I want to share it with you uh, about things which concern not just me, but for the future of my children. Okay, so uh, you've just seen the uh, the trailer for The Prisoner. Uh, and I think the, the main point about the prisoner was we want information. And this is what it is at the moment with life, what we're living. Uh, the new frontier, the new battle. Yeah. Forget freedom of speech. Everyone, I don't know why everyone keeps talking about freedom of speech. Okay. It's no longer about freedom of speech now. It's about the uh, privacy, your privacy. That is the new currency, whether you have the right to privacy. Now, uh, what I mean by that is, for example, um, you go to the doctor, you get a prescription. Have you seen the amount of times they print your name on that label? Yeah, it's all over the place. It's like there's no regard for your name. Yeah, they just spill out your name, bang all over the place. Okay. Your name was something which was, especially in my culture, uh, in, say, in Nigerian culture, and lots of, most cultures, English culture, names are fought over and considered, okay? And they're shared uh, with a, a, an element of reverence. You know, you take the, the name, say, of your father, for example, your surname, your family name, your Christian name, uh, middle names, which are usually to do with some relatives or some particular event in, in life, okay, they have meaning and significance for the people. And they are they are a bit of a, like a social type currency, if you like, okay. But not with these machineries, not with these organisations. They are just a signifier, okay. They don't care, okay, uh, what your name is, only that it's spelled in a certain way. Now, the other element, small thing, is your date of birth. Sometimes you go into organisations and the first question they ask you is not hello, how are you, good morning, but what is your date of birth? Now, your date of birth used to be a uh, a date of a celebration, your birthday, uh, of joy, and sometimes an element of pride. Uh, it's not something that you, you, you sort of like banded about, like confetti, uh, but for most organizations now, they want your date of birth. That is the signifier. That is the uh, the ID and the identity. Uh, and so it's been reduced simply to that. I mean, you, you don't turn around to the person to your left or to your right and give them out your date of birth. Uh, but these organizations, they feel they've got a right to know your date of birth. You ever find that you when you want to ask some of these organizations, perhaps on the telephone, um, for one or two particular questions about something, they are asking you a whole packet of questions. Uh, I called, I think it was a bank, and uh, I was asking, uh, that's right, yeah, it was a bank. A bank had actually closed one of my accounts, and I was ringing up to find out why they had done that. And the person was asking me all these silly questions, name date of birth, address, uh, you know, place of birth, secret code. Uh, then there's like, what phone did you use to access? And I, I said the phone, and I said, yeah, what make, what model? It's like, it was like some sort of like funny little game, like we have all this information on you, and we want you to know 
But it wasn't like we want you to know that we've got this information. It was more about this is the information we have on you. And unless you can justify and match that information, you don't exist. Okay. So where what am I talking about? What where what what am I leading about? Okay, I'm I'm gonna get into this. So uh one of the books which I read many years ago in the uh, mid-90s, uh, which I found very significant, was called Digital Business by Ray Hammond. Ray Hammond is what's known as a futurologist. And he was predicting that uh, in the years to come, i.e. now, okay, uh, the world is going to be looked into two phases, atoms and digital, okay? Atom is this, and digital is the bits on the computer and the digital element is going to become more and more pronounced it's going to have more involvement in our lives this is what he was predicting he sort of alluded first of all about the idea of the money uh, the idea of ordering things online uh, at the time it was very revolutionary now these are like very common practices you know uh, i'll ring up for pizza and the first thing they say is when they see my telephone number is, oh, this is your address. This is your name, isn't it? Yeah. All this data, what they've got on you. Okay. They're grabbing and hoovering up information. Now, where does it all lead to? Well, it comes to the derivative of this uh, central bank digital currency, which they're looking to implement. Okay. So, what, you know, you've probably seen some videos and I recommend you to look at lots of good videos on, on the internet about what CBDC is all about, okay? But the way in which I classify it is very simple. I go down to my local and I order a pint and I pay the, the, the bar, bartender the money, yeah? Uh, and I get my pint, yeah? And I drink my pint and the bartender's happy because he sold a pint, okay? And I just drink my pint in, at leisure and I go home. However, when I'm using my card, what, 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 what is it I'm giving away? What is my privacy I'm giving away here? It's no longer just a simple transaction, uh, 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 two for one or bi bilateral transaction. I think that's the word I'm looking for, a bilateral transaction. No, what I've done is I've given a third party my age, my address, uh, the time I made the purchase, what that purchase was, the frequency of the purchase, how often... I have that purchase, that I make that purchase, okay? And that is on the credit card. Now, with the uh, CBDC, okay, they will be able to see that, okay? I remember I, I had a situation where I had to go through a load of my bank accounts over like seven years, and it was quite it was quite revealing, really, because when I looked at my bank statements and I'd seen my purchases, it, it, you know, it was a little bit like a photograph. It took me right back as to what was important at that moment in time in my particular, in my life, okay? Looking at the purchases. Now, that was for me. Imagine if it's a third party having a look at this. Now, um, uh, sometime about two years ago, uh, I, I was working with a wealth manager and one of their sort of uh, continued professional development things was that you get some certificate or something uh, or CPD, whatever, for uh, ESG, yeah, Environmental, Social and Governance, yeah? And uh, it was basically saying that this is a new area within the uh, uh, financial field, which all companies and organizations are going to be having a look at. How green are you? How dark green you are? You know, uh, you know whether you're going to be investing in oil or arms, which is ironic, really, because uh, the arms is, are doing very well at the moment, what with the war in Ukraine, okay? Um, and it's all about these big uh, investment companies making these sort of so-called moral sort of decisions as to what it was they will be investing in. Now, uh, it's interesting because uh, years ago, I did do my degree on lobbying uh, and the European decision-making process. And what we have here is that uh, certain lobbying organisations have actually tried to create, they've actually created a, a, a doctrine, if you like, of uh, morality for uh, the financial world, which is ironic because they are the most immoral. Uh, of organizations in which to be in okay so uh what we have is situations whereby we know now that our, our privacy is going to be invaded i recently went to my supermarket and uh before it was like half the till first of all all the all the checkout tills were uh cash and 
card. Then they cut it in half, and only uh, one half would take cash. Uh, but you could still take cards if you wanted, but only you know, half the tills would not take cash. Okay. Went into my supermarket recently, and now none of the tills, none of the self service tills will take cash. Yeah. If you want to check out, if you've got a small basket, you've got to go to the main checkout aisle. Okay. So if you've got someone with a massive, with their weekly family shopping in front of you, tough luck. Tough luck because that's what you have to do. The whole idea is to uh, herd you, to nudge you into uh, using cards. Okay, now I told you about that book, Digital Business, and it was revolutionary at its time. It really made me look at how uh, we uh, view, the, yeah, to view the future. Uh, it's coming to pass with the COVID where people are working from home because the essential thing meant that location was not really relevant any longer as long as you had internet connection. Uh, two years ago, when I was working with a stockbroker, uh, we were doing IPOs for satellites and they were talking about the cost of... Uh, putting satellites up into the sky has come down a lot. And so th there's a whole industry about space. And what that meant was that you'll be out soon, you'll be able to get internet connection in the Amazon jungle or in the Sahara desert. Okay. In other words, globally, everywhere, you'll be able to get that internet connection. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean? Yeah. It means that data is being flowing around left, right, and center about you. The tracking, I mean, even myself, and I'm guilty, put my hands up. Um, uh, I'm a single father. I have a track on my kids now because uh, when I'm at work, okay, I, something I like to know where, where my kids are, okay, when they've come back from school, et cetera, they told me. Uh, but, you know, they can turn it off once at home, et cetera. But every, you know, every sort of inch of our lives is being measured. Now, Getting back to the ESG and the big companies, if you like, uh, my bank, uh, I noticed, had a facility where they could actually tell me what my carbon footprint was based on the purchases I've made. So where is this going? Of course we know where it's going because the CBDC will soon dictate to us what we can buy and spend our money on, okay, based on our purchases. They will be overseeing it. Now, they had a situation at the moment in Nigeria where they implemented it. Don't know why they've done it in Nigeria. Maybe it was a test case. Uh, and it's caused all sorts of havoc. But we are sleepwalking into this because in a few years' time, we, we won't, you know, we won't think anything of it. Our freedoms, our privacy will just be given away. Now, don't get me wrong, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't. I've never been to my neighbours. Uh, you know, my neighbour. I've not been invited to my neighbour's place. I've not been seeing the neighbours. Yeah, I, don't, I, I see them occasionally uh, on the outside. I say hello, good morning. Yeah, you're saying so. What? What? The, mm -hmm. What is this? The physical world is shrinking. Okay, the digital world is moving and expanding. If I want to know what's in my neighbour's house. I'll just go and write move. And I'll have a look inside the house. And it'll tell me what it, the house looks like and all floors and everything all day long. Okay? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. If it's on the digital platform, then that's fine. But when it's physical, it's not so fine. Okay? This is what we're sleepwalking into. But we're becoming a prisoner. Another a book, uh, which is, uh, this is, you know, digital business was good and that was 30 years old. Uh, the recent book I've read, which is about I think, four years ago, was uh, Surveillance Capitalism. Okay, repeat, Surveillance Capitalism. Okay, must buy a book because that book is going, is predicting the next 30 years going forward. Okay, and it's all about the information which these uh, tech companies are having on us. You, know, you heard about Cambridge Analytica for example, and the nudging in terms of the voting. Uh, there's also nudging, there's nudging in regards to the, um, the uh, uh, Pokemon Go, yeah, where you're supposed to take pictures of imaginary things, but the whole idea was to nudge you 
to certain people who pay for advertising, like McDonald's. So you're, you're clicking in, you're clicking in, and next thing you know, oh, look, there's McDonald's. Let's go to the McDonald's. You've just been nudged like sheep. We are being treated like sheep. When I go on the underground now, I sort of keep an eye out to see how many people are actually on their phones and how many people actually read a book, a physical book. And it's like everybody, they're just looking at their phones. The phone is controlling them, okay? Uh, so... This is something which uh, I think about. Um, the, the other element, uh, which I want to, we also said, you know, you've got this working from home situation. Uh, but at the same time, in school, this is what I find interesting, is in the school, what we're finding is that still, they are not teaching about finance and financial elements and aspects. Okay. They don't tell you what money is. They're not talking to you about interest rates. They don't explain to you about the significance of inflation. Now, we have been conditioned. You know, I try to I, I try to raise my children. I say, money, what is money? And they, they will repeat back to me. Money is confidence. It's confidence. Yeah, that's all money is. Whether it's a calorie shell, a cigarette, a big large stone, gold, a piece of paper with an IOU on it, it's just confidence. It's confidence on the person in which you've received it. And it's an exchange of confidence. And what we've been doing is, whereas before, it was an, quite anonymous, this transaction, only recorded like on a ledger between two parties, okay? Uh, now it's going to a broader domain, okay, these transactions, okay? And the, uh, the, the idea of money is now becoming digitized, okay? Which is dangerous because... That's turning money into a fault, if you like. No longer a physical type asset, and more of a fault and of an idea. Uh, and that idea is something where you transmit. I mean, soon you'll be able to just wink like that and, and transport money to people. Yeah, it's, it's as crazy as that uh, when we go down that digital path. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's really what I wanted to say, really, is we need to be aware that our privacy, it's not the freedom of speech, it's the privacy, our privacy, which is up for exposure. You've probably heard of GDPR, okay, where it's supposed to be, yeah, and they made a big hullabaloo, of it. This, and they do this all the time, it's bait and switch. So there was a big hullabaloo about GDPR, yeah, about how you're going to be protected from email spamming and all that sort of stuff, yeah, and, and, and people were very happy, you know, because, you know, God for sake, you get an email, which you didn't want, okay? But with about a month before that, a month before the GDPR implementation, okay, a new rule came out within the finance industry, which allowed banks to share financial information of their clients with other banks. Previously, you'd go up to one bank, bank, bank A, open up an account, and if you want to open up another account with bank B, Okay, well, bank B will just have to go by what you've given them. But now they will share that information amongst themselves. So we all know about like credit stores and stuff like that, but there are other elements. So that situation, if you can remember, with uh, Nigel Farage and his bank got closed down. Okay, that was pretty bad. Okay, but really, and this is what's really, really concerning, is all the other banks wouldn't open their account with him. He'd been blacklisted. Now, this is in a so-called capitalist society. But what we've got there is oligarchy or cartel, yeah, collusion going on, okay? Because they're sharing the data about everybody, about their, your, the, your privacy, yeah? Your privacy is the currency of the future, okay? Um, that's it, really. That's, that's what I want to say. That's my little rant. Um, you know, you can see I'm not, you know, I'm not ready or anything like that. It's, I just, I just want to get it out there, yeah? Uh, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are. And, uh, um, yeah, share, like, subscribe if you like. Yeah, that's it, really. That's all I want to say.